Hey guys, Karsh from OneTap here. So in this video, I'm going to talk about how to effectively manage duplicates on OneTap and how to really kind of manage like large profiles, like large list of profiles. So if you're an organization, for example, I was just speaking to a customer and um, she was using it for the hurricane centers in Florida. And then she had a lot of people she was looking to track uh, attendance for employees and other people in the organization. So imagine if you're like a nonprofit, maybe you're trying to like have, you have volunteers, you have employees, you have like maybe literally members you wanna keep track of, but you have a lot of people in one tap. For example, if you have like 200 people, 200 people, right? Um, how to effectively manage duplicates and prevent like duplicates from creeping up and ruining the product experience that one tap offers. So in this video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna use ChatGPT as, um, as our helping tool with, uh, with Excel, get some like random data as well as like formulas and all that. And then we're gonna mirror like real life examples of what customers are trying to upload and how to prevent duplicates from creeping up. So over here, I have this Excel file, right? And this has a bunch of like names over here. So like list of like 21 people that I generated from ChatGPT. And I just have the city in there just because it's like a custom field. I can move that over here. And then let's just say, for example, um, we want to import this list right into our account. Uh, what I recommend people to do is add a version number. Like you could be like, "Hey, this is version one of the file." And if we keep, you know, if we keep changing it, it's the one tap's going to keep track of that with custom fields. Uh, if you don't want to use that name version, just use like, for example, maybe like import date. That way, um, it's just there to help us out. So to, uh, right now it's uh, November. Uh, it's going to be November. Well, it's November the first, and it's uh, one. I should say 1 p.m. right we do this import so we just take that and then we just populate it right here and let's see if that turns into a date yeah there we go and then uh we got the import date so we got everything here so now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna do clear formatting just because uh that's uh, if you have a lot of formatting in the excel file it can kind of mess up the upload and if you have like dates and stuff just be careful uh just only do that to like normal text and then um, yeah let's do the upload so we go over here we do upload profile select the file and then we go over here and we do it so there it is hit continue continue and then we'll see that the 20 names got uploaded so this is perfect and now let's just say for example you have different events and all that coming up right for example you got like different um, for example, different days that you're doing check-ins for. So we're gonna go over here, we're gonna go ahead and create a new list. And let's just say, for example, like um, site check-ins for November the 1st, right? So November 1. And then let's do an example right here where, so we did the name and the email. So how do like duplicates work? Let's talk about that. So our system works with like name plus email as like a unique identifier or like name plus phone number. Uh, the reason why we didn't just choose emails and just kind of like lock like lock the duplicates based on that is because um, a lot of times a lot of community centers use us and nonprofits use us and people share emails. So like you have one person, you have like four or five people in the family, but it's just one email address. And in general, like, um, yeah, the issue, it just became too strict. And then the same thing with phone numbers. Sometimes people will use this three, four people or three, four different profiles will be using the same phone number. So name and that makes sense. And you really want to be careful with this because um, one of the customers I was speaking to, she was organizing some of her files like this. It was like Allen, for example, Harper. And then some of the names, sometimes it was like, it was like that. Sometimes it was like Harper, Allen, right? Um, for that, I would definitely recommend ChatGPT. And then the, the, uh, there's actually a formula over there that you guys can, you can just enter that into ChatGPT and be like, hey, my, you know, I'm using like, for example, last comma first. And then, in, and then in other places I'm using first, last, right? Uh, and it'll give you a formula and you wanna get rid of the white spaces as well. And with that formula, what happens is uh, if I go over here and if I create this column right here, uh, you guys can see this in action too. So if I go ahead and paste this and instead of like, this is working off of A2 as like the main column. So let me just change that really quick. Uh, or actually we can just do a quick, uh, we can just go over here and we can put this into A2. So let's do a quick example. So I'm gonna do insert, insert. So over here I got Smith, uh, comma John, and then right below it we're gonna do, well we already have John Smith right there. So if I if so if I copy paste that formula formula we're gonna see that um, it did John Smith so it so it made it correct and if it and if John Smith's already there in the correct format it leaves it as it is. 
So super useful formula. We're going to put this on the community post as well. This way, all the names just show up, you know, for example, in the format that you desire. And yeah, make sure to go to ChatGPT and you can always tweak this and you can be like, I always want it to be last comma first. So like if the name's given like John Smith, I want it to be Smith comma John. And I'm just going to look up that formula just for reference and also put this on the community post. Yeah, so we got that formula formula right there from ChatGPT. Um, and over here, I got John Smith and see how that changed into Smith comma John. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go over here and uh, I'm going to, what I recommend people to do is I recommend people to have formatted name um, or like just call it custom name. And then whenever you actually do the import, just call it like, for example, like name uh, as like the main field that's already been cleaned up from the formula. We're going to go ahead and delete that. And then even though like, for example, in this case, uh, John Smith, um, well, these are all the names that are first. First and last, if we go ahead and put, paste that formula over here, we're gonna get Smith comma John, and we're gonna get all those names like that, okay? So this is gonna be like perfect for us to for us to import. Um, and, but in this case, what we're gonna do right now is like for this example, since we've already imported these names, we're gonna go ahead and like make this the custom name, just because we just this is like the formatted name. And then we're just gonna use this as the name. And then, so what I'm going to do right now is like for this specific list that I created for November the 1st, I'm going to go over here and I'm going to do another save as, and I'm going to just save this file as, um, you know, version, version two. And then what, what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of a few people from this list. So we're going to get rid of like these names right here and we're going to add in a new name. Okay. We're just going to say Arsh Bay. And then just say like, for example, import date, change these import dates. So this is what I recommend people to do because like if you're doing the import, if you're doing many different imports, uh, put like a date on it. This way you can keep track of the track of any changes that, you know, that take place. Uh, well, you can also like know, hey, this profile was updated at that time. And then the formatted name will automatically just show up right there. Okay, so this is perfect. So we're going to go over here and we're going to do the upload right now. Click on that upload button and then click on B2. And then over here, we're gonna get the we're gonna get this prompt right here. So this is gonna tell us that hey, this is what the file looks like, and we're gonna hit continue. And then all of a sudden, you see how like it automatically found those duplicates, like those these three people right here, because they were already on that original list, and they were already in the system, so it automatically flagged them as duplicate. You want to hit import all, and then the fourth person, which is me, didn't get um, flagged as a duplicate because I was never in the system to start with. Okay, so now what will happen is let's just go into the profiles tab and then let's take a look. So there should be 21 people. There should be like no duplicates. All those people that were originally imported, we already have the import date over here. So we can see that all the people that were like 1300 were imported back then. And then anyone who is, uh, you know, uh, who's got the 16 on it was imported in this last version, uh, like on this last upload. And then the formatted name and all that should just get merged there as well, like with the data. And then on this list, we can go over here and we can start doing check-ins for people. And we're not going to have duplicates here. Like we can be confident of that as long as the email address was there and then the name was formatted correctly, it's automatically going to connect the, connect the dots here. So for example, if I go over here and if I do a check-in, uh, check-in these four people, and then if I go into the record, so let's just say if I go ahead and like look for Emma Brown, There should only be one Emma Brown, okay? And there should only be one James Taylor. Yep. And then the Karsh profile, the one that's my name right here, uh, the one that got imported was created on the 16th. And then by the way, we can also verify that like Emma Brown, or like let's just say John Smith was in fact imported. Well, like the last import date is gonna be 16, but the people from the original file, which I've, if I open up this file right here, for example, if I take Henry Rodriguez, or if I take like Lucas, right? All the import date is gonna be 1300. So yeah, that's it. So for managing duplicates, highly recommend keeping name exactly, just to summarize, just, you know, like in the same format that you're using throughout the system. So if that's like last name, comma, first name, or first and last. Um, and then make sure to add import dates, just because it will be really good for you to like, kind of uh, keep a little bit of a version history on who was changed when. Uh, either you can use version codes like version like one, two, three, four, or just use dates. I prefer dates, and I think most people find that uh, much more, yeah, much more um, visually appealing. And then the custom fields, by the way, do get merged as well. So, for example, if you change a value, technically import date was a was a custom field, and if I change the value on it, for example, if someone's city changes, their ID number changes, 
or their, I don't know, their meal preference changes. You can always like, it'll always get merged in, into the custom field. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, that's how you manage duplicates with one tap and um, keep kind of keep a revision and a, and a history of the files that got uploaded. And then uh, hopefully you have a duplicate free experience with your attendance. Uh, let us know what you think about this feature and how we can improve that. We do have some cool ideas on the table, such as like having a template whenever you upload profiles and reusing those thing, templates over and over again into many lists. Uh, and then as well as merging profiles from one list into a different list. But yeah, we're working on those features and just let us know what you guys think.